Spring practice starts on Monday, and we've gotten the most media access than we've had in Alabama in decades with Kalen DeBoer and his staff. I want to talk about some of the things that they discussed on the next round. Our friends at Disrupt the Media had them on from the Alabama complex yesterday. So we're going to talk about that, the quarterback battle with Jalen Milrow, and the battle for the backup spot as well. Thanks for hanging out with us here on the Bama Tailgate YouTube channel. Make sure that you guys give us a big roll tide with a thumbs up and a like and subscribe. I also want to remind you that we're brought to you by newlifeart.com. And we have coming up after the open, your first look at the 4th and 31 Gravedigger print by Daniel Moore in color and a discount to go with it. So make sure that you guys check it out. But first, make sure that you're part of what we do here. Roll tight, everybody. Here's your invite. Hey, everybody, welcome to the Bama Tailgate YouTube channel. I'm your host and your good buddy, Mick Gillespie. Make sure that you guys uh, follow us uh, at Broadcaster Mick on the socials. And I love to hear from you. And I do hear from some of you guys, but also in the comments section. I love talking to you guys in the comments section as well. Don't mind if we, uh, you know, duke it out a little bit on subjects, but let's be uh, kind to each other. Let's have a great bar stool style sitting at the bar, leaning over the cold one, talking about Alabama uh, amongst friends, because this is a friend's site. All right, here we go. 15% off. Bama tailgate is your code for this print right here. Fourth and 31. And look how beautiful that is. I'm just going to leave it up there so you guys can admire that. And I know that Isaiah Bond transferred out, but if he transferred out, he'll regret that later. Uh, I'll never regret the way that he caught that ball to stun Auburn in one of the greatest Iron Bowl finishes of all time. Some may say the greatest Alabama win finish ever. I loved it. All right, let's get into, I'm just going to leave it up there as we talk about the quarterback spot at Alabama. And I think the real battle that's going to start on Monday is for the backup, not for the starting job. I think that just listening to all of the interviews that Kalen DeBoer has conducted and he's been all over the place. And I'm, and I say this and I don't mean it to be disrespectful to Nick Saban, but I was very critical of coach Saban for not doing more. And you guys know this, if you know me, I've been on radio and I've said it on here, but not doing more with local media. And I felt like that was one of the weaknesses that Coach Saban had towards the end of his tenure. He just didn't want to bother with local media. But local media is going to get your back when the national media isn't. Because they're going to know you. They, 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 there's a, a better chance that those guys respect and care about the program instead of being out to try to destroy it, right? So being on different shows, on Tide 100.9, or being on Jocks in Birmingham, or being on the next round, like the entire you know coaching staff was pretty much. Well, the, you know, all, the two coordinators and the head coach were today. That's a big deal, and I, I, I loved watching it. I mean, it meant yesterday. All right, so let's talk about the battle for backup quarterback. And we've kind of got it in – we've gotten into this a little bit in the past but you got austin mack who transferred from washington who's going to be duking it out with ty simpson who could have transferred but stayed and that shows you something about his character and then dylan lodergan who has been really good in practice and turning a lot of heads this is exactly what you want a lot of talent backing up Jalen Milrow. So we were wondering, could there be a battle for the starting job 
at Alabama. And I don't know. I, I don't feel like that's the case. And I'm going to tell you why. Sheridan was on the next round yesterday, and he was very complimentary of Milrow, called him an explosive runner, but then talked about him as a passer and said, hey, a lot of people know about his running ability, but he's a great passer as well. So your offensive coordinator is already locked in on what Milrow does. The other thing that he said about Milrow, which I have heard from people that I have inside the program, even going back to last year, is that, and these are attributes personally that I love. No matter what job you do, if you bring a great attitude in a work ethic that's unmatched, you're going to succeed. And that is why the players gravitate to Milrow. We saw that last year when Alabama was struggling on offense at the beginning of the season, that the guys were really gravitating towards Milrow because players know. They know if you're doing the extra work. They know if you're putting in the film study because they watch and they're unbiased by that. They talk and they're going to tell each other, hey, man, Milrow is doing the extra work. Now, am I saying that Milrow's game is where Alabama needs it to be to get to the college football playoff and to win a national championship, which DeBoer spoke about yesterday as one of the reasons he came to Alabama, one of the goals that he has, to win national championships? Yes, Milrow's going to have to get better. But if we go into this camp, and you have the expectation that it's an open tryout for quarterback, that's not the vibe that I'm getting from the coaches. Um, you know, the other thing, too, is listening to what Coach DeBoer had to say uh, just about taking the job and coming to Alabama. He was talking about how important it was to have coaches that are humble and selfless and how making decisions needs to be about what makes Alabama better and not who had the idea. And I thought that was brilliant and that's great leadership. It's hard not to like Kalen DeBoer and I just don't get the Brian Harson vibe from Kalen DeBoer. And I know that was part of the narrative from maybe people outside of the Alabama program and maybe even some Alabama fans when DeBoer got the job. Hey, Brian Harson was from somewhere that we never heard of and, <laughs> and it didn't work. I just don't get that feeling with DeBoer. DeBoer's easily likable, has hit the ground running with recruiting, finding coaches. He has had some setbacks. You know, when obviously Ryan Grubb and Scott Huff took off for the NFL, but he's figured it out. And he's excited about going into camp, and uh, I'm excited as well. Now, I, I am a little worried. I, I heard that they are going to allow cameras into practice to film practice. And, and the reason why is I saw a video with Jimmy Johnson talking about playing the Bills in the Super Bowl and watching B-roll filmed one of the Super Bowl workouts, and he realized that Thurman Thomas was going to get shovel passes from, uh, from Kelly, the quarterback, and said, hey, you know, I think it was Mike Wanstad or Butch Davis, whoever the defensive coordinator was. Hey, watch out for that. And they tried it three times, and three times they were snubbed. And the Cowboys ended up winning the Super Bowl. One of them turned into a fumble. So you can gleam stuff, believe it or not. Coaches can from watching practice film. And that was something that Nick Saban never did was allow media to come in and film practice. So uh, interesting 
I do like the openness. I love the fact that the coordinators will now be able to speak. I felt like some of that stuff was very restrictive. But Nick Saban was ultra competitive. And he just didn't want to give the opposition the edge in any way. So we'll find out if it hurts at all that Alabama is opening up uh, practice camp for video cameras. But with that said, hey, we're going to try to be there and get some of that film too. <laughs> all right, guys, thanks for hanging out with us here on the channel. We're going to continue to cover things. Uh, again, if you want this print in your house, which after seeing it, I wasn't sure if I what I was going to do. Was I going to get this or not get this? But I feel like I have to have this. I love it. I love the dark. I love the brightness. I think that Daniel Moore nailed it once again. It just seems so vibrant with the uh, crimson and white and the, the blue Auburn uh, jerseys. This is fantastic. But you can get one 15% off right now. Use the promo code Bama tailgate at newlifeart.com. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with us. Talk to you in the comments section. And roll tide, everybody. We will be back tomorrow unless something breaks. And then, you know, we'll jump on here and tell you all about it. If you got show ideas, things you want to discuss, hey, comment section, great place to do that. Roll tide.